Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy for another reading your comments, reading your comments number four, because this is the best way that I know that I can kind of engage with you guys. And uh, today's drink, just like last week, this is uh, coffee. <laughs> I tend to do these on Sunday mornings and so I don't really want to, um, actually, let me show you this mug that my wife bought me years ago. A Telltale Heart, my favorite, my favorite, favorite story by uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Mm. All right, without any further ado, <clears throat> I say we get into this, but I want to say thank you, everybody, because I think we're up to like 515 subscribers right now, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and I'm hoping that the community tab opens up in about a week so I can start asking you guys what you would like me to start covering. But without any further ado, let's get into reading your comments. So this is from reading your comments number three. Sorry, my setup is bad. I, I need, I can't even properly show off like my Newfoundland like hat. All right. Um, little movie perp. And this went on for a while. Says nerd shelf leaves a lot to be desired. Very basic berry. And he won't tell me what. He says the nerd shelf. I think he's talking about this. I think he's like saying it needs to be brought down. He says it. I don't know. I don't know. I tried dragging it out of him. It was like a 20 comment long thing. Low movie perp. You just got to tell me like in plain, just like be like, add, add a drink with crazy. You're a moron. Just do this with the shelf. And then I might be able to understand what you're, uh, uh, what, what, what you're saying. All right. Uh, Giovanni Tuminia says, please, 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 could you cover Gabriel's Truth, Justice, American Way and John's Overmind as well? Um, I just did my first video for the Truth, Justice, and American Way the Friday, Saturday, Friday, Friday, um, and I will be covering that one. And also, uh, John's Overmind, I haven't gotten to, though. I need to get to that one. I haven't even looked into it yet. I uh, haven't had the time. And if you hear the doggos in the background, they are literally playing upstairs. I am sorry. I can't. I can't stop that. I have tried. I if, if I just decided to wait for my house to be perfectly quiet to do videos, I would just never do videos. And that's actually why I didn't do videos for a very long time. Although that is really loud. Oh my goodness, Lord Hound Dog. I might put her... You know what? Let me take them outside real quick. And with the magic of editing, you guys didn't even know that I was gone. <laughs> uh, Xavier Guzman says, Ah, yes, some hot coffee. Yes, yes, coffee. Coffee, I think that's going to be the thing, because I, I try to do it on Saturdays. I got busy. And after I did the, uh, the video yesterday, man, I was just god-awful kinds of tired. I, I don't know what was up. I was just like my wife and I both were just like, what's going on? Like we just, we could not summon energy out of us to save our lives. And then we were up until like 1230. I was showing her the Dragon Ball uh, Z Battle of the Gods and Dragon Ball Super Broly movies. Because she needs some more Dragon Ball in her life. Thank you so much for that comment, Xavier Guzman. Billy Bob Six Sack says, I do believe uh, that's a cross on his suit. And maybe he was put into a position where he had to break his religious beliefs to save the day and why he left. And he is uh, talking about um, uh, the artwork for Isom, uh, for the Isom character. Uh, Garcia, Xenoverse legend. Garcia XZ, XV legend says, completely understandable. Don't mind at all that you have to skip some of my comments. Your channel rules. Uh, thank you so much, Garcia. Yeah, that was in response to last week's reading the comments when I was like, so basically, if you guys come in with like short little comments here and there that are like one, two sentences long, give or take, not, you know, um, I'll probably in one video. So like if you guys comment on every video of the week, I'm going to try to at least read one of your comments on every video of the week. If you guys come in and you comment and you're doing like novel size, like four and five like comments on um, a video that are 
about different subjects, I'm probably only going to read one of them, right? But if you come in to one video and you're like, hey, dude, like the channel, what about this point? And then you come back later and go, hey, totally forgot, what about this point? And it's just real quick, I'll probably read both your comments. So that's what that was in comment too. And uh, Garcia, XV Legend, understands, and I, I was very, very happy. Sunny Kim says, I hope they do Piccolo and Gohan justice in the new movie. They have really wasted them as characters for far too long. Also, have you ever watched Team's Four Star Dragon Ball Z a bridge? It's hilarious. TFS Vegeta is my spirit animal. Uh, to which I replied to this, and Billy Bobsack jumped in, and we started quoting Team Four Star's Dragon Ball Z abridged. <laughs> yes, I have absolutely seen it. Uh, no, I think Piccolo and Gohan have been sat on for far too long, and I think that that's something that Toriyama realizes. Um, now, we say this, but they were legit only... I don't know, I guess they were sat on for, like, timeline-wise, between uh, Z... He tried to hand it off back to Gohan in, in the Majin Buu stuff. Um, didn't really... yeah... Uh, Piccolo's been sat on for a long time, and I'm glad that he's giving Piccolo a new transformation from what the rumors say. All right. And that was reading your comments number three. Let's get over to... I have to move this hat. I need to find a better place to put my hat. You know what? I don't even care. That's a hat from my family. It can hang on Andrew for now. That's probably very blasphemous to all the Tolkien fans, but it's a hat from my family, so... All right, the video after that, which you guys just blew this one up is Lord of the Ring Lord of the Rings the Rings of Power is hype but not for the reasons you think. And I think it was because of the way that I named it. Um yeah, and you guys commented for days. Oh my god. Cody W just Cody just comments with a W. I think he means winning, but I wasn't sure so I didn't put the little heart there. Um Yeah. Uh, usually I put the hearts on there to let you guys know that I'm reading your comments, uh, cause it is more than a like, like that's how I acknowledge you to you guys that, Hey, I've read your comment and I am, uh, I like it. Actually, I got to add one here. Melody project. Interesting. Fourth great religion question mark. Yeah, Melody. And I actually went into the comments here and explained the idea that with all this woke stuff, the fourth great religion seems to function or this, the, the woke stuff functions very much like a religion. That's why like cancel culture and all that. And like, Oh, you have to admit that you did wrong before we'll let you have your social media back. It's similar to that of, you know, confession and professing your, um, professing your, your moral sorrow to the gods before you. But the problem is, is that all these woke people don't believe in anything higher than that of mankind. Um, they, they, and so because of that, everything gets brought down to an imperfect, you know, man-made level. <clears throat> and with them being the gods, they can constantly change the rules as they see fit. Because usually you can say, well, that's between you and God. But because of their religion and their faith, they say, no, this is between you and me now. And I get to decide when your penance is up. Um, and there's a lot of other aspects. That's just a real quick rundown of the woke stuff and why I call it the fourth great religion. That's just one aspect. That is not all of it. it. I could literally do probably an hour long video and I would probably have to script that one um, to make sure that everything is concise the way that I need it to be. But no, on, on why, on all of the elements that make it like the fourth great religion. Um, David Hunter, if you can't joke on YouTube, why not move to Odyssey? I am actually already over on Odyssey. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, is Odyssey is, I freaking love their UI. They look so good. I went to Odyssey for uh, computing forever um, because Dave Cullen, his computing forever channel is over there. And that is the only reason I went over to Odyssey. And then I was like, well, we're doing the YouTube channel again. Maybe Odyssey will, you know, copy my videos over there. And I hit the button and they did it this time. So, uh, yeah, um, I would not solely be on Odyssey because um, over like 30,000 people have seen uh, the videos that I have done over here on YouTube. And like 30 people have seen them over on Odyssey. So that tells you that there's that big of an audience gap. If Odyssey was also getting those kind of viewerships, you can kind of flip a coin and just say, hey, I'll go to one or the other. But I actually don't have to be on one or the other. Uh, but no, we are on Odyssey. 
And yeah, I just have to watch my jokes because sometimes I get a little spicy when I joke. Uh, what is real says, my advice uh, is don't apologize for it. It's not bad. Um, And I said apologize for what exactly? Yeah, what is real? If you're still checking out the channel, I'm not sure what you meant by that. I don't know if I apologize for anything. Maybe like a rhetorically, like, oh, I'm sorry, but maybe it was a rhetorical thing that I said. I'm not sure, though. Uh, but yeah, if you could, uh, if what, what is real, if you could clarify what you meant by that, uh, Xavier Guzman, <clears throat> I can't wait to not watch this show. Yes, I agree. I agree. I, I don't, I'm not going to watch it. I, so I, dude, I jumped out hard on like, I, I made a hard out. I saw like Avengers Endgame. And then after that, I haven't watched anything Marvel because it's pointless and I don't like rage watching stuff like, eh. I just don't. I I would rather watch something that I enjoy with my wife and kids instead of watching something that I'm like, wow, this is this is hot garbage. Um, so I've not seen any of the Marvel Disney TV shows. Obviously, I watch the reviews and stuff on them, and I you know I've seen clips and things like that. But I'm not gonna waste my time there. Um, as far as the Rings of Power thing goes, if anything comes up that like piques my interest in it, I will absolutely cover that. But yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Fopeezy says, shout out to you, sir. Thank you, Fopeezy. All right. Uh, Daz and Zeus. You wokes shall not pass. Yes. <laughs> you wokes shall not pass, says Daz and Zeus. Uh, uh, Radu Domonovich. Uh, yeah, Domonovich. I think is how I say that. In some European countries, uh, kids uh, could have alcohol, so don't worry. Yeah, yeah, but YouTube likes to use the American laws sometimes to say that you can't do that unless you violate an international law, and then they say that you can't do that. So YouTube will pick and choose the rules that they want to enforce when they want to enforce them. Um, Mark Ashman, good work, got my sub. Well, thank you so much, Mark Ashman. I... I can't believe I can't believe you guys are all subbing to this channel. That's just amazing. Um, uh, Christian Fl uh, Florito says, "I loved your golem. Thank you so much." Yeah, that was. Uh, it's very out of practice. I it used to be a, a lot better back when I would practice it like over and over and over again. It's it's really. I mean, I mean, we're talking God, fifteen years ago. And I'd still do it over the course of time, but as I've gotten older, <clears throat> my voice has deepened, and I just so I can do the um, golem a lot better because my voice is deeper. But for some reason, I keep over pitching Smeagol. I think my golem is really good, but my Smeagol I keep over pitching, and I think I have to flare my cheeks out when I do it, you know, because it if you're gonna do you know, voices like that, you pay attention and why does it crawl, Smeagol? So. And, it, you know, again, I tighten up my throat here. I get very, you know, I hold my breath back. I have to, you, you, you have to, I have to breathe out of the sides of my teeth. Um, <clears throat> and obviously my voice is very hoarse this morning. So um, I need to work on it though, because I like doing fun little voices. And that might be something that I'm actually going to do for the ch I have a thought because I love, I love doing fun little voices. You know, my kids always think it's funny when I do stuff. So, um, but yeah, no, thank you so much. But yeah, it's just like the golem voice. It's fun to do. And I just wanted to talk with you guys about how I do it because it's fun and I like it. Um, the Grey Wizard, these uppity psychopaths crossed the goddamn line. Yeah, I I think that this is the line in the sand for a lot of people. Uh, uh, Mr. P.W. Miles, uh, keep on drinking, buddy. Meanwhile, Rings is, uh, Rings is promotion. It has no bottom line. It's uh, it's the 50% that you don't know is the 50% that works. The, the wokeism serves the purpose no more. The purpose is to push the past aside. So I didn't quite understand this when I read it the first time. And I think I understand what he was saying now is that it really... Um, <clears throat> I mean, Amazon just has endless, endless pockets. And they're just going to keep pushing money at this thing. It doesn't matter to them. 
This people people keep talking about they spent a billion dollars on this show. They have to do fifty-eight million dollars an episode, guys, for a trillion dollar company. I mean, think about that. A trillion dollar company. Like, don't get me wrong, that's a lot of money, but we're talking about scale. I mean, we're scale we're scaling dollars here that like we the, the human mind has a hard time comprehending a trillion dollars. Like literally, like that's our cutoff. Like after that, we're just like, that's why most people are like, oh, okay, that's why the debt's that high. Okay, because we physically cannot grasp it. It is so fucking huge. So um, I don't know. I, I think I think I understand what me, uh, Mr. P.W. Miles was saying here. And I appreciate he's actually been back a few times. So I do appreciate uh, the fact that he is commenting and uh, making me think because he doesn't, he's not, <clears throat> he doesn't come in it directly, and I like that because it forces me to think, especially when I'm tired. Uh, Jacqueline Smith, you are seriously wrong if you think geeks and gamers, nerdrotic, etc., reflect the uh, majority of Tolkien fans. They jump on anything they think they can uh, make money on. I doubt that most people complaining about Rings of Power on YouTube channels have ever read any Tolkien at all. I think Jacqueline Smith, I mean, that is a very uh, basic answer there um one i i mean when gary can quote to you like the fall of gondolin and like character histories and stuff um i know he's read his share of tolkien um i like reading the letters of tolkien's and looking up the quotes of tolkien personally uh and geeks and gamers has openly said that the, yeah they 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 make youtube channels and they that's their job is to jump on stuff and make money. They're not going to apologize. That would be like a grocery store clerk apologizing for ringing up your fucking groceries. Like, so YouTube is not my job, right? Like, it's not my job. So me jumping on stuff to make money, I don't know. It's like, I could, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it yet. But like, if YouTube became my job, like, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Um, would it be cool if YouTube ever became my job? Yeah, probably, but... I could potentially start waking up at like five o'clock in the morning instead of like three forty-five. That would be cool. That extra hour and fifteen minutes. That's also why this video is really late today. Uh, but no, <clears throat> um, and I the the um yeah. So the and the these these people just um. They're and a couple of people commented here. They're they're making very blatant generalistic comments. They're not getting specific. See, and that's the thing is all of the Tolkien fans that I am watching who are very mad about the Rings of Power are getting very very specific. Going, this is what Tolkien said. Here's his quote right here. Here's this quote. Here's other quotes. Here's what he wrote in his books. Here's an interview that he did, and they're literally showing what Tolkien said. Most of the people out here who are saying, oh no, Rings of Power is fine, only the real Tolkien fans, they speak generally, they don't speak specifically, and so that's how I kind of weed out the people. Those people who can speak specifically on a topic, I kind of trust them more. And that's one of the things that, like, I do try to speak specifically in my videos, but I also understand I am kind of like, um, you know, a jack of all fandoms, master of none. I like so... I, I I like and enjoy so many different things from a bunch of different like areas of fandom and as well as science and politics and all the other stuff that I'm into. I just don't have the time to invest to become like, you know, uh, 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 like only involved in this type of politic or, or in this type of um, um, fandom, right? And with the magic of editing, you guys have no idea what happened. Anyway, um, Jusso uh, Violi. Uh, I am sorry if I... Uh, Uso, I think it was... U, I think it would be Uso. I don't know how the H would be pronounced... Or the J would be pronounced here. I want to say it would be like an H or a J. Anyway, um, thank you so much for commenting. Uh, I'm so sorry if I butchered your name. Billion... <clears throat> billion fans versus trillion dollar company who will win the battle of our age is about uh to begin take your uh take your bets people tolkien's writings have sold across the decades so many uh copies that tracking them has become basically tolkien's writings have sold uh across the decades so many copies that tracking them has become basically uh uh impossible 
but it is estimated to be over 650 million Lord of the Rings trilogy and around um, around 150 million. So he's saying total token works and then the Lord of the Rings just 150 million translated to over 60 languages and that's just the books there are plenty of movie only fans i think it's a fair statement to say that tolkien fandom is roughly a billion or at least approaching it um first writings about the silmarillion were written in the trenches of the battle uh of the some called fall uh of the some called fall of gondolin this fantasy epic is a hundred years old uh yeah so um, no, he's, he's hundred percent right. Yeah. Uh, Tolkien w- w- wrote, um, in the trenches of world war one. I, I know that, um, I, yeah, he might've, it might was it the fall of Gondolin? I thought it was, I didn't think it was the fall of Gondolin. I thought it was, I thought he began writing, um, the Hobbit or the, uh, the, maybe it was the fall of Gondolin. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, no, I'm probably hugely wrong on that. Thank you for correcting me. And yeah, billion a billion fans versus a trillion dollar company. Like, who's gonna win, right? Um, I I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I who's gonna win on this one? Math says I imagine that a lot of people are going to want to see uh, the show to see what all the drama is about. So they are gonna get an overall increase in their subscribers. Even diehard fans are going to want to see the show just to be able to criticize it. So I don't see how they are going to take a financial hit. They will probably get a lot of negative attention, but do they really care as long as they get their money? Yeah, I I absolutely agree with you, Math. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. That's kind of part of the reason. Like, I already pay for Amazon. Like, I do. And so, because I... Yeah. I And everybody's like, well, if you really believe this, you wouldn't pay for Amazon. Guys... The world works in a very certain way, and trust me, I live in an area, like, I put my family in a place where most of what we do is give to local businesses. Amazon is actually one of the few things that we don't do that's a local business. Like, yeah. So, because I live in a very small town. So, yeah. Like, I, I, and people were like, oh, how small? I mean small. People are surprised when I say that with the number. So, but yeah, no, I already have Amazon. I don't want to watch it because I don't like hate watching stuff. And I don't want to watch it with a pen and a notepad going, oh, this is, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to do that. I could, I could, but I don't, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> Simon Ruddock, you should do more with that Smeagol voice. Thank you so much, Simon. I just did a little bit earlier in this video. Um, uh, Jarno Brofelt, great take on the topic. Well, thank you so much, Jarno. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, Giovanna Tuminia, back again. I thought your reinventing of the Golem voice was pretty good. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was embarrassing, and I'm glad that you guys liked it. Um, uh, WLABA272 says... Uh, I was hopeful when Net uh, when Netflix butchered The Witcher and the outrage was immense, <clears throat> but they've doubled down and made a second season and a third one is, is somehow also in production. Uh, the Witcher, man, uh, the IP with uh, books more mature and complex th- than Game of Thrones, uh, from which George R. R. Martin clearly took tons of inspirations, especially with the realistic, nihilistic, brutal world. Because, uh, suppo- uh, uh, I know how to say this word, Sapowski's Witcher was literally the first fantasy uh, in the world written in that mature way, and the first books uh, were translated to English before Martin started with his work, so it's a no-brainer. Yeah, I, I, it's getting real hard that a lot of liberties are being taken with um with a lot of this stuff and again i think a lot of people um tolkien specifically i understand why christopher tolkien was so pissed off at the lord of the rings movies and thought they were an absolute betrayal of what tolkien wrote because tolkien tolkien flat out said no you don't change my writing like i wrote it this way he left some stuff and there's a comment later that we'll get to, but yeah. And then obviously you see here, all these companies, they just keep coming in and doing these shows. And 
falling flat on the face. You know, it's, it's really bad. And the problem is, is that because there's, it's not like you have regular television anymore and the best you're ever going to get is the best you're ever going to get on TV. And people are like, people don't take that crap anymore because there's literally a thousand different places that we can go and consume media. We can find some guy who's, you know, with a, with, with a, with his freaking, you know, cell phone shooting and recording a story and writing a story on a cell phone. That's better than the actual story that we're seeing on television, right? Like we can go and find that stuff as fans. So if you want to get the fan engagement involved, you guys actually have to pay attention to the source material because otherwise it's not like the old days where we only had so many channels that we could watch and we were just pigeonholed into like, okay, well maybe the problem here is, is that we have everywhere else to go and we don't have to watch your stuff, right? We want to, and we're pissed off that you're changing it and you don't seem to care. Um, and that's the biggest issue. That is the biggest issue. Like I said, it sucks. I've seen a lot of my favorite franchises just die over the years. <clears throat> Michael Vera. Okay, so I listen to you on the road, so I don't look at the screen all the time. I straight up thought you were showing a new preview for Rings of Power. Your golem voice is good. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed by doing that voice. I still am. Oh, and I'm glad you guys liked it. Uh, Timothy uh, Marcou. Says, uh, you look a lot like Vigo Mortensen when he was in the trilogy. It's almost uncanny. Other than that, uh, for the franchise, it'll uh, it'll be fantastic when Tolkien's work becomes public domain. Yeah, we're gonna see a lot of good and a lot of bad from that. And thank you for saying I look like Vigo Mortensen. Um, that is one handsome son of a bitch, though, and I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm quite there. But I appreciate it. Thank you. That that, that man's is a handsome man's for sure. <laughs> Uh, Nico Navarro says, nice perspective. Looking forward to, uh, the post, uh, prime rings of power analysis. Yeah, I, <sighs> yeah, I might have to do that. I'm, I'm still figuring out how I'm going to, to attack all this. LP says, I liked your usage of the concept of woke being a religion. Thank you so much. Sonny Kim, dude, I know uh, more than all of these Disney apologists with YouTubes. Uh, I wish Star Wars fans were half as knowledgeable as the Tolkien fans. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be really cool. Uh, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings is timeless. The Rings of Power is only ever going to be a 2015 tier politicized piece of garbage. Yes, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings is timeless, and I don't disagree that they're injecting a lot of 2015 politics. Um, and I think that the Lord of the Rings from Tolkien is even more timeless because that's what we, well, they're ripping it off now. And they would, I would say this, Amazon is ripping off Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson was inspired by. And if you said, well, what's the difference? Well, the way that they're acting in the language that they're using, you know, because there's this thing called context. Thomas, massive Star Wars, uh, massive Star Trek slash Star Wars fan. I have not watched the new stuff after its destruction was becoming evident. What it has done is made me go back and watch TV series and movies uh, from 10, 20, and 30 years ago. It's been one hell of a nostalgia run. Now back to watching SG-1. Good for you, Thomas. I have been going back and watching a lot of older stuff myself. Uh, not a part of the, like, like Star Wars, I can't watch it. They, they tainted Star Wars really bad for me. It's it's heartbreaking for me to go back and watch. Like, And I have like the DVDs. Um, I don't have any like, collector's stuff. Um, but I, I can't. I can't. I, I've tried. I can't. It's it's really hard for me, um, which is a bitch thing to say, right? It's just a fucking movie, but like it's really really hard. Uh, but no, I'm glad that you're going back and watching the older stuff and having fun with it. Um, Guy Gad Boys says, "Hmm, yes, there's been a bit of good hitting back, but Amazon activists, I'd say, have been successful so far in pushing their ideology, the uh, um, that resources in this case acting roles." have to be uh, distributed by race all over uh, all other considerations. No one likes to address uh, that one head up, but it has to go. Also, a rich uh, target that people aren't focusing on is Bezos himself, though this started with his vanity project of wanting his own Game of Thrones type of show, so his uh, vanity should be attacked. 
Uh, so should his uh, record as an employer, etc. I'm throwing out as many bald Bezos jokes as I can come up with lately. Cheers and thanks for the video. Yeah, guy, yeah, boys. I don't disagree with anything that you said there. I absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, these companies have literally come out and said that your first thing that you do when casting is look at the race of the person. And I think that that is a segregationist mentality. And I don't I, I don't like segregationists. I don't. I think they're hot human garbage. So but, you know, they want they want to tell you that you have to look at someone's color and their genitals before you look at the person, because I don't think that I, I will have to I will have to make a woke is a fourth great religion video and really dive into that because there's so much that I can do. All right. Oscar Stan, uh, Stainton, Stain, Stainton, Stanton, Stainton. I would say Stainton. Cause my last name is, you know, Sainton. And with the AI in there, I would say Stainton. So Oscar Stainton. Great video. The part that frustrates me is people openly stating, uh, that they, will hate watch this terrible show for shits and giggles and for views, and that will draw more people to it for the memes, kind of like Morbius. I'm hoping I'm wrong, but I will need to see it happen first. I think a lot of people are going to hate watch this. I think they are. They're going to do it for the views. They're going to make money off of it, and that's their right to do so. And I actually don't hold anything against them for doing that. If that's what your gig is, yeah. Like I said, you know, I'm a construction worker. It would be like me going, uh, I just don't. It would be like me going, well, I don't like doing construction to make money. Oh, I'm almost out of coffee. That's not good. But yeah, I mean, you know, or a grocery store clerk, like not bagging up your groceries, like, or checking, like, I mean, come on. Like if, if your job is to go on YouTube and talk about your opinions and your thoughts on a lot of this stuff, then that's what you do. Um, and these guys do come out and they do praise, you know, a lot of people do come out and they do praise a lot of, a lot of movies out there. They're not, they don't get the hype, but you know, they, they do get praised. So I don't like that hat there on Andrew. I just don't, don't like the hat on Andrew and I'm about to destroy some stuff. I figure out where to put this hat. <clears throat> think about it after the show. I think about it. All right. Moving on to Eric July, uh, Razor Fist, Gabe El Taibi, the Iron Age, a rant. Uh, I was really proud of this rant. And it actually did fairly well for my little channel. So I am very, very proud of that one. Um, and I don't think this one had nearly as many comments. It didn't have nearly as many views either. That other one, you guys like watched the hell out of that one. Uh, faux peasy. He's back. He says, shout out. We will win. Yes, we will. Uh, Xavier Guzman. Did anyone see the daily wires movie terror on the prairie? I have not seen terror on the prairie yet. Xavier Guzman. Elias, uh, custodio says facts. I appreciate you. Yeah. I, uh, uh, going for it on this one. I, I kind of got lost in the uh, in my <clears throat> my train of thought and just went for it. Giovanni Tuminia, good rant, but next time try to use more of a slideshow format. I think it would work better with the type of narrative you deliver. Yeah, there's a lot that I would like to do with this. I'm I'm running into time constraints. Like even today, I have to get this video out, and then my wife and I we've got to do a bunch of running around, and then we are going to a meeting tonight at the bowling alley to get set up for a Sunday night league. So, and then I, I'm just, I'm just, my back, my back is against the wall and like the days are not long enough. I, I, I need like a 36 hour day to be able to do everything that I want to do, but apparently people can't function like, well, and the world doesn't operate that way. So two way Oregon boy, another good vid, bud. love the framed Vegeta and the safety sign. Uh, and that safety sign is great. Yep. The uh, four rules. Always remember the four rules. Always. Always, always, always. And yeah, I'd love the Vegeta. It's so great. Uh, Kyle Phillips, not going to lie. wasn't feeling it today, but you are a spark for a soul. Thank you so much, Kyle Phillips. I am glad that I can pass that energy on to some people when, when I need to. I, I believe that we all should try to do that in our daily lives. Uh, DJ Chi, I'm all in on the Iron Age. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, the Iron Age is going to be hopefully good. Hopefully the Iron Age is going to be good. I really do hope. 
Um, Lucas Garrett. Wow, we haven't seen Lucas Garrett's comment. Uh, all I can say is, well said, Royce. You get it. Thank you so much, Lucas Garrett. I do um, appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Mexi Wolf 009. Fun fact, Razor Fist doesn't drink alcohol. I learned that about four years ago. Don't know if he still uh, doesn't now, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, a lot of people are kind of looking at me like, you you don't have to drink alcohol to do the show. And I'm like, okay, yeah, but like, I drink beer and I stop when I feel it, right? Because I like the taste of beer because outside of that, I have water and coffee. I don't drink soda. I don't drink like Gatorades. I will do an energy drink. Uh, like if I am driving down the road and I start to like nod off, um, I will pull over to a gas station and buy an energy drink. I don't drink them. I don't like them. I think they're horribly like, I think that energy drinks and soda is worse for you than any of the fucking beer that I drink. And I would, I would based off of the results of all of the, um, the sugar industry, um, studies that are being done right now, I would, I would almost fight anybody that if, so I drink black coffee, I drink water, and then I like to have my special beers and then my other beer. Um, now, do I need to have the beer? Absolutely not. Do I like it? Yeah, I do. Is it unhealthy? Fuck yeah. But I also smoke cigarettes too, so, which that's a really unhealthy thing to do. That That is actually something I should stop. But we'll get there. We will get there. All right, and that was all for the, that video. Yeah, see, you guys did comment a lot on that one. Uh, right, DC Comics is no longer comics. Scroll down here. Two-way organ boy, congrats. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I think this is where we hit 500. I think we hit 500 on this one. It was great. Uh, Faux Peasy, back again. Shout out to the man. Be easy. I see what you did there, Faux Peasy. I, th I, I see what you did there. You got me to rhyme. Uh, Giovanni, too many. I grew up with Marvel as far as comic books goes. If DC Comics dies, it dies. Um, yeah, but like that, I mean, it's going to die, but that really wasn't the point of the video. The point of my video was more so let's talk and reminisce about some of our uh, favorite stories. And I also, compl I, I said the darkest night and uh, Green Lantern story, and I meant the blackest night Green Lantern story. And I said it twice. Because I think I had just said, like, the Dark Knight movie. Oh, my God. That was bad. That was bad. I was like, I caught it when I was uploading it. Because as soon as the render was done, I pulled it up over here. And I'm listening to it. And I'm typing stuff in. And it's like, and I hear Darkest Night. And I'm like, that's not right. I'm like, it's 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 Blackest Night. It's not. And I was like, oh, no. And so I had to run into a pinned comment. Yeah. Uh, Josh Allen, Action Comics number one was in 1938. Last time I checked, that comic is now worth over a million dollars. Yeah, so I don't know why I thought it was in 34. I don't know why. I, I don't know. I'm a, hi I, I'm a history nerd, so I get a lot of dates and stuff confused sometimes, and that's why I look stuff up as much as I can because, you know, if you put one event in front of another event in history, it, it completely changes the context of what happens. Which is why historical revisionism is terrible. Uh, Xavier Guzman. All I know about DC is the movies. Rip Reverse Isom number one will be my first comic ever. I am so glad to see people saying that. Uh, Dead End 4991. I've always been the biggest Clark Kent Superman fan. I stopped reading comics around 2012 due to not really having time because I joined the army. So I honestly never had to deal with the nonsense comics firsthand. And I am so glad, but I'm really bummed by what's happened to DC. I couldn't really care uh, what happens to Marvel since I've never actually read Marvel comics, nor have I uh, really been a huge fan of Marvel. But DC, yeah, it's downing. Um, I'm looking forward to the Ripperverse, though. His story is where I stepped back into comic book reading. Yep. I'm getting into it now, too, and I'm going to be an Iron Age comic book reader, uh, probably. Most likely, yeah, that's going to be a thing. Michael Vera, I grew up on Teen Titans. I remember being devastated when Robin had to work for Slade to keep his friends alive. Anyway, I actually have faith that DC will make a comeback. To me, it looks like the new management is going to make some good changes. Yeah, David Zaslav is... Ooh, that guy is just an employment butcher. <laughs> Ooh, man, he, 
That guy's just like, hey, have you made money for my company in the last 30 days? And people are like, uh, he, he, there's the door. You can leave. Like, that guy is that bad. It's freaking psychotic. Yeah, Zazlav. Man, don't take no shit. Uh, ja Will 23 My favorite DC uh, moment would be when my mom bought me uh, season one of Batman the Animated Series. Uh, the second the intro started playing, I was immediately hooked. Have been a DC fan ever since. Sad to see the direction it's taken over the years. Yeah, um... Awesome to the first season of Batman the Animated Series. And yeah, that's such a great, you know, da, na, na, na. I can't even do it right now. I can't, but yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> yeah, and then, um, yeah, also sad to see the directions taken over the years. Yep. Um, and then uh, my pinned comment, and I have to read this. I say, I meant Blackest Night storyline. Sorry. I'm really tired. My bad. I will correct this if I need to. And I just did. I am so sorry. And then little movie perp had to come back. And he goes, but you won't correct your nerd shelf. Wow. Tell me what you want, little movie perp. Tell me what you want me to do, okay? Gotta keep moving. All right, and with the magic of editing, you guys don't know what happened. All right, this is uh, rip Reversed artist Gabe El Taib, comics first impression. So this is where I actually went over. Um, the, uh, rip reverse artist Gabe El Taib has his own comic book, Truth, Justice, and the American Way. Um, so Faux Peasy comes in and says, what's up? I love Faux Peasy. He's so fun. Um, Corey Sanford, sorry, could you sound any less masculine when you say, oh my gosh, I love my shandies. Oh, I can. I can. You have no idea. But yeah, no, that was fun, Corey Sanford. <laughs> Thank you for checking out the video. He uh, also said he loved the channel too, so he wasn't, he didn't just jump in to give me some shit. But yeah, oh no, don't don't ever challenge me to sound less masculine, because I will. I don't give a shit. I got a big titty goth girl and four kids, so yeah, no, you guys go fuck yourselves. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I love having fun with you guys. Uh, Xavier Guzman back again. He says, looks like I'm going to be buying another comic book. Yeah, so now Xavier Guzman said Isom number one was going to be his first comic, and now he's going to be buying uh, another one. Oh, my God, that's still hot. Oh, <clears throat> fingers. I can feel my fingers now. 11th Tribe. I love Summer Shandy. Wisconsin, my home state, has a brewery that makes a great Summer Shandy. Hey, Mama Runner is from Wisconsin. Uh, Mama Runner is, that's that's my wife. So, yeah, she is from Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, and Wisconsin's got some great breweries up there, too. Uh, haven't been to any. I just, I know about them. Uh, I am originally from Colorado, and they are getting heavy into the brewery scene. And they have some absolutely fantastic beers out there. In Colorado, if you guys ever get a chance um, to check them out. But yeah, no, the, the, the craft beer scene up in Wisconsin is restupulous. All right, Michael Vera back again. I'm excited for this one. And this is Truth, Justice, and the American Way by Gabe El Taib. I'm excited for this one. Although I wasn't a fan of the on-the-nose fake news bit, I don't want to think about real-world politics in my entertainment, whether it comes from the left or the right. Mm -hmm. And that was a point that I made, too, absolutely. I have a good feeling it'll be a fun read, though. Yeah, I think he's going more the direction of, like, a Superman-Batman, like, public enemies type thing. Or not... He's not going to carbon copy the story. I just like, I, you know, I think there's some inspiration there. Um, <clears throat> Comics by the Bay, 500 subs. That's awesome. Congrats, ma'am. Loving uh, what the Ripperverse is doing. Go woke, go broke. Yes. Yes. And I believe it's get woke, go broke. But I, I'm not in the business of trying to correct your guys' grammar. I just know that the quartering doesn't like it when people say, say it like that. I was going to do a quartering video. I was. I was going to do a quartering video. Because he said something in one of his live streams uh, on Thursday with Sidney Watson that I just thought would be fun to talk about. But it's also IRS and taxes and some of my opinions on all that would probably get me banned off of YouTube. <laughs> anyway, uh, Giovanni Tuminia, best video to date. You nailed it this time. I think you have a ton of broadcasting potential when you organize and control your delivery. You need to start connecting with the likes of Geeks and Gamers, Nerdrotic, Ryan Kinnell, The Critical Drinker. Uh, if you get on one of their weekly live streams and get more exposure, I have no doubt the sky's the limit. Thank you so much, Giovanni Tuminia. And 
I did reply to this. This this comment thread went forever in a day. Uh, this one had like, I think this one had like, no, it wasn't this one. It was a different one. It was a different one. Um, but I think that, I mean, it would be really cool to be invited on one of those shows, but I don't, I'm not going to reach out to those guys and be like, hey guys, I have 500 subscribers. You should notice me. I'm not going to do that. I want to grow this channel in a way and engage with my audience that I have over here in a way that those guys look over and go, uh, who, who's this guy over here? We need to talk with him. I would rather grow it organically. And, you know, if, if people that are watching me go on their live streams and they're like, Hey, you need to check out a drink with crazy. Like that's how it's going to happen. Right. That's how it's going to happen. And so I would just like to grow this organically. Um, so yeah, but I, the fact that people are telling me that I'm, you know, I could, you know, run with those guys as a really, really big compliment. All right. <clears throat> and this is the last video up to this point. And I would imagine that this video is probably going to have more comments afterwards. Cause I just posted this one yesterday. This is Lord of the Rings, uh, rings of power and Amazon's critical mistakes. Uh, Mr. PW miles came back he says does anyone in america drink authentic czech beers uh uh boudoir uh Pil pilsen uh it's sort of a metaphor um yeah i and then he went on to mention that like pilsners we would call them pilsners um are czech in origin and so yeah um i have had some pilsners um um but yeah so Um, I've had some Pilsners and yes, a lot of people, I would imagine that there's, uh, if I knew, I, if I actually pulled it up and like saw what Czech style beers were, I've probably had some, uh, because I mean, we here in America have to bastardize everything from other countries. So we, we're constantly making other people's stuff with American takes on it. So I'm sure that I've had something that is inspired by Czech beer. I guess I've had Czech beer cause I've never been to, uh, the Czech Republic. So. Oh, goodness Lord. Um, <clears throat> John Odendahl. Um, I think there's space for Payne and McKay's take as uh, there will be space for others in the future in the same way there was space for uh, Bakshi, uh, Rankin, uh, Rankin Bass, and Peter Jackson inspired artists uh, at, at, I don't know if he meant etc., but he said, et al. The original works are still there uh, to be read and enjoyed. You referred to Tolkien's letter in your video. Letter 131 was written to his publishers a few years before Lord of the Rings made it to print. Um, I would draw some of the great tales in fullness and leave uh, many only placed in the scheme and sketched. The cycles should be linked to the majestic whole and yet leave scope for the minds and hands wielding paint and music and drama. And I, I, I think I see what you're trying to say here, John. Um, I, I think for people who are trying to pay homage to Lord of the Rings, um, and honor what Christopher Tolk, or I'm sorry, what J.R.R. Tolkien wrote, although Peter Jackson absolutely bastard, well, he didn't quite bastardize the story. He, he took some extreme artistic liberties with it though. Um, and completely changed a lot of it. Um, yes, they are good movies. Yes, they are masterpieces. They are, this is not what Tolkien wrote at all. In some cases it can be, but it is very different. Um, I don't think there is room for people who are introducing uh, postmodernism and Marxist ideals into a show. I don't, I don't think that there, there's room for that at all. Postmodernism and Marxism cannot. Uh, John, I do, I do appreciate you commenting and thank you. Um, and I don't, I don't think a lot of people see what this is because on its face, they're like, Oh no, no, everybody has artistic liberties. No, this is there. There are reasons behind this. There are reasons that they're doing this. Um, but John, thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to heart your comment right now. Cause I haven't done that yet. Sonny Kim says, great take. I was really proud of this, this rant. I just, I, I just allowed the stream of consciousness to take me. And I think that it, um, I think that it got me where I wanted to go. 
Uh, Xavier Guzman, I can't wait until I don't watch this show. Xavier Guzman, I feel like you said that in another... I see what you did there. But yes, I agree. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to watch it. I mean, I guess if all you guys bullied me into watching it, I might. But, ugh. Um, Anton um, Schneider uh, McKellick says... Hi, that's the first of your videos I am watching. Came to your channel as a Tolkien fan. Thank you so much, sir. I hope that I do not uh, reflect poorly on your uh, fandom. Um, I am a Tolkien novice, after all. Uh, but I need to com uh, to comment first on your lager beer. I, I am born and grew up in Germany. As a teenager, I came into contact with GIs and American Budweiser beer. That stuff tasted like water. <laughs> you don't drink ten of them. You don't... Uh, he goes, uh, that stuff tasted like water. Uh, you drink 10 of them. You don't, uh, get drunk, but you, uh, lose water like a fountain. Yeah. Uh, my sister got married in 2016. I went to the States, Seattle, and I was positively surprised by how much the art of brewing increased in the States. I had the pleasure to drink several IPAs and I really have to say, yes, that's what I call a beer. Sorry for that small story. I just couldn't resist. Cheers. No, Anton. And yeah, I, I drink the cheaper stuff because it, yes, it does taste like water. I absolutely agree. Um, and, um, but I have had beers all over the spectrum, cheap, expensive, really expensive, high alcohol content, low alcohol content, um, stouts, sours, pilsners, um, goze's, um, goze, is it goze, goes, goes, anyway, um, Kolsch's, Kolsch's are actually my favorite, I like a good Kolsch, mm, you get a good Kolsch, whoo, yeah, buddy. Um, IPAs. That I have had a few that I like. Most IPAs I am not a fan of. I think people go overboard. But Anton, I, I love your comment. And cheers to you as well, good sir. Thank you so much uh, for, for checking me out all the way from Germany. Giovanni Atuminia, back again. I have a few friends who have never read Tolkien, so they will watch Rings of Power and enjoy it most likely. Sometimes ignorance is bliss. Yeah, yeah, and that's where a lot of stories are. You know, if you don't know about it and you don't care. I mean, and that's the thing is as big as these fandoms are, there's like 8 billion people in the world or something like that. Like there's so many people in the world that the amount of, I, I don't know if the Tolkien fan base is up to a billion people. I would say the Tolkien fan base is probably like a good 500 million. Um, uh, but I don't believe that we're looking at numbers that are large enough to, you know, it might be one of the biggest fandoms in the world, but I mean, I also thought Star Wars was too, but we will see how we, uh, keep going. Um, <laughs> Gabe Logan, Gabe, it's so fantastic to see you says, but before we get into that, let me introduce today's beer. I love that line. Don't push yourself too hard. Remember the way I see it. All drinks are drinks. Want to drink? I uh, want to see you drink, and it's not showing up here, but I think he had a tea kettle. Uh, tea one day. I'm keeping some video in backup so I can comment later on those to help the algorithm. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gabe. I appreciate it. And yeah, no, actually, my favorite, I, a good English black tea. Yeah, a good English black tea is my favorite. Um, especially if I get it, I'll sun brew it in the summertime. Um Iced tea, no sugar. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, wait. Apparently, the OK sign's a racist symbol now. You can't say OK anymore. Fuck off. Um, Josh Smith, I got here through the Young Ripa clarification video and subscribed after that. The Amazon project seems like an enormous plea for ESG investors. Um, that's a real deeply pocketed rabbit hole you could look into if you haven't already, since, uh, it is what is largely, uh, driving the Western woke entertainment push. Yes, Josh Smith. I will not comment vocally anymore here because they will rip the channel down. But yes, I absolutely, um, yes. Environmental, social, and governance, uh, rules and contracts are, um, you can go look at banking websites and, and see what they're saying about how, you have to act in order to transact. Seriously, go look at, go check out your banks and see what their rules are for, um, and what they're going to start pushing out in order for you to even keep your money in a bank or use a bank to transact money. It's it's utterly terrifying. 
Um, Pearl Lumi Lumisa. The Amazon rings of power writers are sounding more and more like Melkor and Sauron by creating their own version of Lord of the Rings. Yes! Yes, they are. And nobody says M Melkor. Great. Oh, yes, they are. No, I actually, one of the things I love doing is I love watching Men of the West. I actually found Men of the West years ago and started watching him. Uh, love Men of the West. Such a great channel. Ram. Dude, I found your channel in the first uh, few weeks of the Rip Reverse campaign, I believe, when you made a rant video about PayPal, and since then, I've enjoyed all your videos. Keep up the great topics and videos. Even me, who couldn't get into Lord, uh, the Lord of the Rings movies, you caught me watching this video in full. Great video. Thank you so much, Ram. And that is it. That is that is the comments for the week. Um, I am kind of with my voice being as rough, I'm kind of glad you guys didn't comment as much as you did the last week, but I'm also hugely glad to be here with all of you. And I thank you all so much for checking out the channel, getting us to 500 and like 15 subscribers and uh, just keeping it all coming in. And like, man, there are videos that I do and I don't know how this all works. So some videos I do and I'm like, yeah, I killed that one. And y'all are, y'all don't watch it. And then there are other videos that I do and I'm just like, well, yeah, maybe that one will be okay. And then it's like two and a half thousand views. And I'm like, okay, I don't understand this roller coaster. So that being said, help me understand the roller coaster guys. Uh, and let me know what you guys want to see in future videos. And if you guys like this reading the comments videos, this is like the closest thing I could do to, I guess, reading super chats. Um, but I don't, even if I ever got the capability to reading super chats, I don't think I want this to go away because I like this. I like pre-recording a video, going over your comments, and showing you guys I give a shit about what... Now, if the channel grew to a point where there's so many comments, I still have to figure that out. I... 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 Mm, yeah, I'm still going to have to figure out how to appropriately handle that. But anyway, thank you guys all so much for watching A Drink With Crazy, and I will see you all next time right here. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.